it's starting. <coughs> How do I know when we're there? You're there. Good morning. We have a new camera. It doesn't bing at me. We're live. So I'm guessing we're live. I'm guessing you could see me. Be sure and give us a thumbs up or type into the comments. Tell us who's there. It's always kind of neat. I get a whole different picture in my mind depending on who's there. Let's see, yesterday, uh, Sunny and Cora were the first ones we saw come on. Let's see who will be first today. Nick, Sophia, Sunny and Cora. Mr. Joey and I will take some bets here. Who's going to be first to sign on? Lydia and Patrick. Oh, I'll have to guess who's going to be first. Mr. Joey. Oh, Mr. Joey's not got Forrest, an easy way to see Courtney anymore. Forrester K. Oh, Sonny and Cora made it first. Hi, Cora. Hi, Sonny. How did your giraffes turn out yesterday, Cora and Sonny? Did you like them? Did you give them long eyelashes? I like my giraffe. Just, Actually. Just Cora today. Oh, just Cora. No, Sonny. Did you get long eyelashes on your giraffe, Cora? I actually ended up. The joy of painting is we can paint over it if we don't like it. Donovan's there. Hi, Donovan. Uh, I have ended up painting over my giraffe's eyeballs yesterday. I kept looking at mine, and his eyes just seemed too high up on his head. And the nice thing about paint is I had paint on my little palette. So I just painted over my eyeballs. They kept bugging me, and if something bugs you, you should change it, right? So I painted over my giraffe's eyeballs and changed, put them down lower on his face, and then gave them long eyelashes. So be sure and type in, let me know who's there. I got Cora, I got Donovan here. Have we seen Nick yet? Joey's watching his phone for me so he can see who logs in. I just see comments. Trying to get logged in. Don't you see a name with the comment? Because mm -mm, I'm on my Facebook watching it. Let's oh. see. So Mr. Mark has to tell me who's logged on. We're going to give everybody a few minutes. We're going to use our black paper today. See my cool, like, dawn where the sun's coming up and it's dark out and we just get a little bit of light spilling over. So we're going to use our black paper today. We're going to have a little easier project today. Yesterday was a long project. The day before with our clay was really involved. So we're going to do a real simple, easy one. We're just going to use our chalk. Y'all had a piece of white chalk and our black paper. That's all we're going to need today. Oh, nope, shouldn't say that. We need something to draw a circle with. So I have a trusty little travel my, cup here. Am I getting a code on, the, on my phone to my computer yet? Okay, Mr. Mark has to tell me who's on because Joey can't see. If they comment, I can. Oh, you have to type in a comment. If you type in a comment, Mr. Joey can tell me who's there. So you can't just log on. You have to type in something. Does everybody know how to do that? I would be one of those technologic, technologically challenged people at knowing how to do that. But if you know how to type in a comment, type in a comment. Say, hi, it's Cora, or hi, it's Donovan. You guys did that because Joey already told me you're there. So if Sophia's there, type in and say, hi, it's Sophia. Or if Sarah Elizabeth is there with her mom, type in and tell me. We've got five people. Okay. So we're going to give everybody a couple minutes. Oh, we're not even till 11 o'clock. I think we logged on a little early today. Some days we're kind of scrambling around in here, turning our lights back on and setting our cameras back up. And, and we just make it at 11. So we were kind of early today. But while you're waiting, a couple people we've got signed in, you want to find yourself something that's a circle. So I had a coffee mug here. The first coffee mug I grabbed was actually a square shaped mug. So that didn't work. We don't want our sun to look square. So a coffee mug like this size, one of your like big travel mugs works. I think surprisingly these are about the same size circle. And you can see the circle on my black paper. It looks huge, but it's actually made from, from my travel mug here. Okay, so while we're, while we're watching for the couple more people to come on, because it's not quite 11 o'clock, 
Uh, go find yourself a travel mug, and you need your piece of chalk, and you need your black paper. I think you only had one black paper in your activity bag this week. So grab your black paper, grab your chalk. You can get a pencil if you want, if you feel more comfortable lightly sketching things with pencil. You can just barely see pencil on your black paper. But if you want to give yourself a little guideline first, we're going to make a mountain range here. And I don't want you to use your chalk and have it not the way you like it. So find yourself a mug, big coffee mug like this. Cereal bowls, a little too big. Uh, saucers are a little too big. Little dessert plates, a little too big. But find like a travel cup like this. I think everybody's got little travel cups. Or like one of your big water bottles. The bottom of your water, bo water bottle might be big enough. The bottom of my travel mug would be a little small. Because I like the size of this really big sun. So look for a travel mug. Big turbis turbis is that what those are called those really cool cups that don't get condensation on them and everybody has one now the top of a turbis cup would work top of a, a travel mug would work top of a coffee mug would work if the coffee mug straight up and down the bottom would work too or asking chalk or oil pastel we're gonna do chalk uh you could do oil pastels on this one too but Let's try our chalk today because we're we're gonna do what's kind of called a monochromatic picture okay. where we're just gonna have a little bit of light showing over our scene here makes it look like these guys just took their rowboat out and the sun's just coming up in the morning and it's spilling over the edge of the mountains so we just see a little bit of light lighting up just a few spots in the picture We'll use our chalk today. Chalk will be a good one to use today. That little piece of white chalk that's in there and your black paper. And we're going to make ourselves a morning scene. This would be for somebody who's an early morning person. I don't call myself a morning person. Usually when the sun's coming up, I'm still asleep. So we got a few more people that have signed in. This is Lydia and Patrick. There's Lydia and Patrick. Hi, Lydia. Hi, Patrick. This, does this remind you, Lydia and Patrick, of anything in the studio? This should remind you of one of the paintings that hang on the wall. It's the one that hangs right next to the calendar, and it's all in tones of blue and black and white. So we're kind of mimicking that painting, if you guys think about that. It's like a long, skinny, horizontal painting that hangs on our wall. Hi, Nick. Nick would know this. Does this look familiar to you, Nick? This should remind you guys of that long, skinny, horizontal painting that hangs on the wall right near the calendar in the studio. So we're going to mimic that look of the sun spilling over the mountains onto the lake in the early morning hours. So all we need today is a piece of black paper out off your clipboard. That should leave you one piece of white paper. We're going to use that tomorrow, a piece of watercolor paper. And then you need a piece of chalk that was in your bag. If you feel more comfortable lightly sketching with a pencil on the black paper before you use your chalk, you can do that. I'm just going to draw right with my chalk. And then you need to find something that's going to make you a nice big circle like this. Surprisingly, this big giant sun here is my travel mug. Oh, here, Lydia and Patrick, do you like my travel mug? See my giraffe? Let's see if Joey can let you see my giraffe. My daughter-in-law, Mary, made this for me for Christmas. Other way. <laughs> Joey's always motioning and telling me what to do. So my big giant sun on this chalk picture we're going to make is made from the top of my travel mug. So if you've got a big travel mug like this, surprisingly, look at that. It makes that big giant circle. Uh, you could find a coffee mug. Coffee mug, this would be a good size if you got a nice big hefty coffee mug. Travel mug. Uh, bottom of water bottles might be a little small. What's kind of cool about this picture is how big the sun looks. All that light coming off the sun. So something about this size. I tried a cereal bowl, too big. Tried a little dessert plate, too big. So if you've got your cup, 
got something to make a circle with, let me know. Give me a thumbs up. Um, coffee mug should work if you've got a nice big coffee mug. And then you just need your piece of chalk. And if you're more comfortable with your pencil sketching first, grab your pencil. And I'm going to show you how we're going to do this project. This is a nice, simple, easy project. We had a long project yesterday with our giraffe and our painting. And uh, I was telling Cora a few minutes ago, my giraffe, I kept looking at him that I painted yesterday. And he just bugged me a little bit. And so I ended up going back and repainting over his eyeballs. And I painted some blue sky and made his face skinnier and moved his eyes down. So that's the joy of painting. It's one of my favorite mediums because if you finish something and you're like, eh, not your favorite thing, you can always paint over it. Paint you can keep painting over and change it as much as you like. Other things like our chalk, once I got all this chalk smeared on my black paper, it's a little hard to go back to black paper, but we could turn it over on the other side. So if you've got your black paper, I'm going to let Joey move in. And we're going to get ready to draw this nice little sunrise scene. We've got everybody tuned in and signed on. This is kind of a quiet morning. It's so pretty out. Our weather's gotten pretty. It's nice to be able to go outside. So this will be a fun project to do when people are back in later. This is my cup that I'm going to use to make my circle. We're going to move the activity bag and let's see if Mr. Joey likes where these are sitting on here. I'm actually going to change this way. There we go. So we're going to we're going to start. Oh, I need my um little cardboard. We're, we need something to draw a straight line with to make our little horizon line here on our lake. So my suggestion is in your activity bag, grab that piece of cardboard, that piece of mat board, that heavy board that all our papers are clipped to. It makes a great straight edge to use. And since it's cut, Mr. Joey cuts these in the frame shop for us each week. It's got a perfect little 90 degree corner on it. That makes it easy to make our line go straight across. Okay. Now let's look at on my on my drawing here. Let's look at where our horizontal line is. We're going to put this line in first. That's the horizon line where the water meets the sky. And we've got a little land in between. So this is about the middle of my paper, right? If you look at where my pencil is, that's in about the middle of the paper. So we want to go a little lower because I want room for this giant sun and some mountains. And I don't want the little boat to look too lost down there by itself. So if this is the middle of my paper, I'm going to go down a little lower. So I'm going to take my cardboard here. This is how I'm going to draw my straight line. And I'm going to first put it out here so I can see. Let's see. See, I can see the side of my paper. Uh, this would be about the middle of the paper, right? This is about in the middle of the paper. Yep, I'm pretty good at finding the middle. Look at that. So I want to go a little lower. Maybe just leave about this much of your paper showing. And then line up this side of the cardboard with the side of your paper. So I got it lined up nice and even here. And then I can draw across my line here. So, did you find your piece of chalk in your activity bag? It's freshly broken chalk. <laughs> so it's got a real crisp edge there, right? Where I just broke it. Once you use chalk for a few minutes, it's going to get rounded on the sides, which is fine. But right now we want this nice crisp edge and I'm gonna put it down right along here and I'm just gonna, whoops, I'm gonna draw a line. There we go. I don't want to press too hard. I don't need a really bright white line. Okay, so don't press too hard. Draw yourself a line. That's all we're going to need your straight edge for. And I didn't press too hard with my chalk. 
the line can be kind of light. The harder we press, the whiter the chalks look on the black paper. And you can tell in our drawing over here where we want it to be really, really white. On the sun, it's going to be really, really white. The middle of the reflection here is going to be really, really white. The front of the boat and the front of the people is going to be really, really light. Could you tell, as soon as you look at this picture, that looks like a boat with two people in it, doesn't it? Did I draw a whole person in there? Did I even draw a neck? Did I, did I make a nose on them? Do they have arms? They don't, but you could tell right away they were people. So <clears throat> all we have to do is sometimes give a hint of something and you get it. Okay, have you got your water line in here like this? Okay. Now we're going to create a little bit of mountains. So we're going to pretend this scene is in, in upstate South Carolina or up in the western part of North Carolina, up where we got mountains and lakes. Okay. Now, the one thing I want you to think about when we draw a mountain range is it's not curvy, is it? Mountains are kind of jagged and rough. And in order for them to look jagged and rough, we want to use more straight lines. They can go on diagonals, but we don't want them to be too curvy. We don't want smooth mountains. The other thing I want us to think about is we don't want to go zigzag up and down too much. Then we start looking like the top of a picket fence. So we're going to make, we're going to draw some mountains, but we'll make some come up and go down. And we don't want all of them to just have one point at the top. Do you see how this one goes up? and down and up and down just a little bit. It stays kind of flat on the top and then comes way down. Then we get some little triangle mountains in here. But then we get a big gap. So everything doesn't look the same on my mountain range, does it? We want some different shaped and size mountains. So the first thing I'm going to do is put my mountain range in and if we look at how far it comes up, here's our horizontal line for our water, right? My mountain range is not quite a halfway in between there and there. We want to leave a lot of room for that big sun. So I don't want to come any higher. Here's about halfway up. So I want to keep my mountains down in here. So think of keeping them down about this high, okay? Then that leaves us this big open sky to put the sun in. So we're going to go about this high, and I'm going to start over here with a tall one. I'm going to use this nice crisp edge of my chalk, and I'm going to press very, very lightly. I'm not going to draw my mountain range really dark because I don't want all the tops of my mountain. I don't want the tops of my mountain to, to um, be too dark. Okay. So I'm going to start over here, and I'm going to put, I'm pressing really lightly. There we go. And I'm going to come up the top of this mountain, and I'm going to keep the top of it kind of flat. Now, see my flat top here? It didn't just go bzing straight across like a ruler, did it? It kind of was a little wobbly, okay? Wobbly, but with straight wobbles instead of curvy wobbles. Then my mountain's going to come down, 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 down. It might come up a little more right here and go down. Let's make a few really small ones in between here. Good morning, Kayla. Long term, this is Mark. And then we can come over here. Oh, good. How are you? Now, remember, we don't want to press too hard. We want to press kind of lightly. Oh, good. Okay. I don't even have to make the line go all the way. I can just give myself some almost like little uh, dotted, I very light line. Look at it yet. Um, we're okay. Right so now, do a few little I, dotted lines. Yeah, I'll, I'll Keep the line really light. I pressed a little hard in the middle here because I know that's where all my sunlight's going to come down. But over here, I pressed really lightly. Perfect. Okay, I've got a really kind of meandering mountain range. I kind of like my mountain line there. Now, if you want to do this in pencil, you can press really lightly with your pencil too. And then if you want to change something, it's a little easier. I want to see what's cool in this picture is to see one mountain range behind the other. 
So I think I'm going to pop another mountain in over here. And again, I'm going to use my chalk really lightly. I don't know if you'll even be able to see that. Can they see that, Joey? Okay, so I want this one to meander along like this. And I might just have it come all the way down over there. And let's see where else can I put a mountain. Maybe I'm going to leave a gap here. I might put another mountain coming off over here. And let's see if I want to add any more. I might add one down here in front of this one. Maybe we'll make one that's going to come right across in the front there. Okay. We don't want to get too many because we want to be able to leave all this nice dark space in between them. So you don't need too many. This In this spot, I've got one, two, three. That's about as many as you'd want. We get too many in there and it's just going to get too messy. Okay, so if you got some cool looking mountains, remember they're, they, they don't all go up and down in a point like a V, like an upside down V, but we do use straight lines. So get some nice straight angles in there and let your lines go across. Put a mountain in front of another mountain or you can put another mountain behind a mountain. Get your mountain on there. And then we're gonna plot where to put the sun. We're gonna put this big giant sun that's light, starting to light up the night sky. Okay, so to do that, I'm going to take my travel mug or whatever you found to make a circle with. And I'm going to decide where I want to put it. I want the whole circle to be just above the mountain somewhere. We don't want to put it in the middle. Because what we want to do is have this nice reflection coming off of it that's going to light up our boat over here. So if you want it to be on this side, we'll let it reflect and we'll put our boat on the other side. But let's not put it in the middle. So find a spot you're gonna put your sun. Maybe I'll put this one on this side. Nope, I like it over here. So pick, pick where you're gonna put your sun. Leave just a little space above the mountain where you're gonna put it. We want the whole circle to fit on the paper. See how my circle is still on the top of the paper? Or, you know, if you found something really big and it won't quite fit, it's okay for it to run off the top of the page. So try to put it in here so we have a little bit of space above it and below it. If it doesn't fit, if it's going to run off the top of the paper, that's fine. It doesn't have to fit right in there. But if you've found a good spot to put it, we're going to take the Nice crisp edge of your chalk and we're going to trace around the cup and again just like I used a really light line I didn't press too hard with my mountains I don't need to press too hard while we draw a circle okay so hold on to your cup and see if you can get the edge of your chalk draw a circle around your cup I've kind of laid my chalk so the edge of it's right against, right against my cup. Because chalk doesn't really have a point like a pencil, does it? So it's not the easiest thing to draw with. Chalk isn't, but I got my circle on there. There we go. Okay, you got your circle on there? It's kind of hard to draw around there with the chalk. I kind of le leaned my chalk on its little edge there to kind of draw around. And I didn't quite get my whole circle drawn, but that's okay. I've got enough on there that I can color it in. Now, I want to think about this picture. The other thing we're going to block in is our little boat. And if you look at this little boat here, we, it's just like a little rowboat. They must have gone out to gone to go fishing, maybe. Some people go fishing really, really early in the morning. So it's got just a little flat bottom here. And it has a little diagonal in the front. Doesn't 
pull up very tall and high and then it curves down a little bit and then it's got a diagonal going the other way at the back see how lightly i drew with my chalk at the back here when i outline this boat i'm going to draw very very lightly because i want the back of the boat to look like it's not lit up so i don't want to see some big white lines back there so i'm going to quickly lay in my little boat over here so i'm going to move my paper so you can see it a little better how's that and we're going to make this boat oh we're going to make this boat really really small okay so i'm going to take my chalk on its little straight edge here and i'm going to put a little straight line just about maybe what is that an inch long and then i'm not pressing too hard i'm going to put a little diagonal going out the front make a little diagonal going the other way out the back and then I'm gonna make them meet in the middle again I don't even have to draw my line all the way across I can just very lightly I made that I made the top of the boat curve down just a little bit so there's gonna be my little boat we kind of want it to be horizontal so it's parallel with the horizon so it looks like it's sitting in the water. Mine actually comes up a little bit, I think. Does that make a better horizontal line, I think? Okay. We got your boat on there. I'm going to go ahead with the boat. What we want lit up the most from the rising sun is this front edge of the boat. I'm going to take my truck. I'm going to kind of color in just that little front part of the boat. Just that little front part. And then I'm going to put my two people in the boat. Because they went out as buddies. Now, they look like people. I've got, I'm going to think of putting a little oval. And then like an upside down U for the body. And I'm going to keep it really small. So I'm going to put one little oval in here. I'm not pressing very hard with my chalk yet. And then I'm going to put a little fatter U upside down you underneath so there's one face I'm put a person behind them I'm not I'm trying not to press too hard with my chalk so I got my two people in I didn't press very hard with them because I'm gonna come back and press harder in places to make it more white okay mr. Joey I should just keep these apart right I'm gonna let you focus back in and I'll try to remember to keep my hands down there this way okay so we got our little boat kind of just gives us a few little guidelines here first thing we're gonna do is come up here and color in our Sun now I want you to do one thing when we're coloring the Sun color it in in a curve so you're matching which would make it easiest anyway we don't want to go past our circle we drew and with the sun we can press kind of hard we want it to look nice and bright white so if you're coloring it in you can color it in in curves like this make your make your chalk lines go in curves just like the sun then if we see any hint of the black paper showing through since your lines are going in curves, it's going to make the sun feel round. This will help it look like this nice glowing ball of light up here. Okay, I'm going to color all the way up here to the top. I'm not going to press quite as hard up at the top. I'm going to try to keep my brightest, lightest part of the sun right down here. Almost like a bright sunspot. So I want that nice and bright white where I don't see any of my black paper showing through. Up here I'm going to keep coloring in my nice curvy lines. Because a little of my black paper is going to show through. 
Now, since I've been pressing kind of hard with my chalk, I'm making a lot of chalk dust. Are you making chalk dust? Smell this chalk dust? Don't blow it off your paper because that'll land on the table or it'll land on your your brother or sister's artwork next to you. So if you need to get the chalk dust off, then take your paper, tap it up at the top of your table. You can flick it with your finger. Okay, see all my chalk dust is on the table there now. Okay, so we colored in. Got our sun colored in. I see a little bits of the black paper showing through, but that's okay. Just kind of makes it look a little three-dimensional, doesn't it? I'm going to try to cover up most of the black spots right in this bottom of it. Okay. Now, here's what I want you to really concentrate on. What we want to do is get the feeling like this sunlight has kind of hit and lit up the edges of our mountains, kind of like when you shine a flashlight on something. So this flashlight's shining right behind this mountain range. So I want the very top edge of the mountain range to stay black, but then I'm going to light up a little bit of it where the sunlight's spilling over the top of it. What I'm going to do is go from the top of this mountain Lay my chalk down. Don't need to press too hard. Just want to make some light reflections right now. I'm going to use from the top side of this mountain. And I'm going to pull some light up onto this mountain here. Because that sunlight spilling right down and lighten up my mountain. Okay, I'll have a little bit. The farther away from the sun we get, I'm going to press lighter and lighter and lighter. So the farther away from the sun, I want it not to look so bright. So I'm pressing harder and harder. I can use my little finger and blend it a little bit. You see how I didn't come all the way to the top edge? Don't go all the way to the top edge of your mountain. I'm going to blend it in a little bit. I got much more sunlight over here since it's closer to the sun. And I pressed very, very lightly over here. So we're letting the, the black paper is actually helping us make shadows. Okay, so we want it nice and bright white right in the middle here. And I'm going to let a little sunlight spill over onto this next mountain range too. So I'm going to come down here at the bottom of it. Right here in the middle. I'm not going to go all the way to the top. And I'm going to press really, really lightly as I get out here. Barely pressing. Barely pressing. I'm holding the chalk very lightly, and I'm barely pressing any chalk down there. I can lay the chalk on its side and press really lightly with it on its side. And once I get out here, I hardly am going to see any of my sunlight gotten so far away from here that I can hardly see it. Really helps when you get to an area you can lay the piece of chalk down on its side. It makes it easy to make it light. Now remember how I left a little black showing up at the top edge of my mountain. In some places it might almost blur right together where that sunlight's coming over. So I've got so much sunlight coming over right there. It's kind of blurring together. I don't want it to just end like that. So I need to lay my chalk on its side over here. Up near the top. Let's put just a little bit of sunlight pouring over the top. We can put just a little bit showing this one. So I can rub in with my finger here. 
It's just a little bit of sunlight showing on those mountains. This is the brightest part where the sun's coming over. So I'm going to come back here because if you noticed when you when you rub in the chalk, it makes it a little lighter. You're kind of rubbing off some of all that chalk. So I'm going to come back in here where I want it to be really, really white and add just a little bit more chalk right in that part. A little bit more chalk right in this part. And then I'm going to let this taper out a little bit more. There we go. I'm just going to rub out here at the edges now. I don't want to rub where I put all my bright white. Okay, I'm going to tap it off. Are you getting a lot of chalk dust? I am. So I'm going to hold it up like this. There we go. Okay, I got all my chalk dust off there. Now, this sun rose up in the sky and its light is just radiating off of it. So if I want the light to look like it's radiating off of it, I'm going to lay the chalk on its side. I'm not going to press as hard as I did when I colored in the sun. But I'm going to go right up next to the sun. I'm going to give some curves coming out from the sun. Press lighter and lighter as I get further away. Now, I don't want them to go over the top of my mountain range. So I've got to stop with the side of my chalk right at the top of my mountain range there. See that? So use the edge of your chalk and stop right at the mountain range there. As it comes across here, we're going to get lighter and lighter and lighter. Okay, so we're going to put a little bit of sunlight coming off over here. put some coming out from the side. I'm going right up next to my sun so it looks like this, these, this light is just shimmering right off the edge of my sun. Right up to the mountain top. Then I want to press lightly as it goes off the rest of my page over here. Alright. So we got our sun just lighting up the sky. I'm going to come in here and press really hard right where it gets outside the mountains here. I'm going to stay right above my mountain line that I drew. So I'm going to give it a little more white, a little more white light. And then I want it to fade up here. So now I'm using my chalk on its point on the end of it instead of on its side. Okay, now you can take fingers and you can lightly blend this light coming off our sun if you want. Lightly blend it out here. Lightly blend a little bit in here. Come right under here and blend. I'm not, I'm not trying to blend too close to the mountain because I don't want to mess up its little edge. I'm going to blend around here. There we go. Okay, my sun is definitely lighting up the sky here, isn't it? The last thing we need to do is put some reflection in our water. Are you liking your mountains? I'm going to give them just the littlest little hint. I'm pressing really lightly with my chalk over here. Whoops. I didn't want my chalk to go above the mountain. You can erase the chalk. If you get in a spot where you don't like it, you can use your little white eraser. There we go. I'm going to turn this so I can get the edge of my chalk right up a little bit. Let me get just a little bit of light spilling out to the edge there. Okay. Blend that with my finger a little bit. Okay, we got some lit up, some sunlit mountains here. Let me show you what to do to make some reflections. 
the water is nice and smooth and still. This is this is early in the morning. So our water is nice and still and smooth and flat. When the air moves across the surface of the water, it creates just little ripples, very small little ripples. We're not putting any big hurricane waves in our water here. We're just going to have some few ripples. Ripples are going to go horizontal. They're going to go parallel to this horizon line you drew. Okay, So we don't want wavy ripples because we're having very still water. We need straight little lines like we did over here. And the first thing we're going to do, it's wider at the top, and it keeps getting smaller and smaller, kind of making like a, a big, wide, wide V. When we first make some lines, I'm going to use the other side of my chalk. I've been using the one side that was broken. I'm going to turn it over and use the other side so I still have a crisp little edge here. If you don't have any crisp edge left, you can break your chalk and create a crisp edge there. What I want to do is draw some lines. They don't all have to be the same length, but I'm going to leave spaces in between them, like you were skipping a page on your paper. Okay? Good morning, Taylor. So we don't want to press too hard. I'm just going to stack up a bunch of little horizontal lines here. Some of them are short, some of them are long. We don't want them all to be the same but we're gonna think of putting them into a big V like this. So think of having some outside boundaries there and we're gonna keep stacking up our little lines like this. And I'm not pressing hard. See how I don't have any really bright white lines? I don't want these to be really bright and white yet, okay? But see how this is like my sun reflecting on the water. I'm going to carry a few more over here, very lightly up here. And then I want to put a few underneath my boat. Okay. So the first couple are going to be the same length as the bottom of my boat. And then they're going to start actually getting wider. Reflection is like the opposite of what's above. So my boat goes up this way, so if it was opposite, it would go out that way. Okay? I'm going to take my finger, I'm going to smear under the boat just a little bit. Because I want it to be fainter. And I'm going to take, I've got a little corner, a nice little point on my chalk here from drawing. So I'm going to come in and give the front of my boat, I'm going to press hard and give the front of my boat some really bright white. I'm going to come on the front of their faces, just on the front side of their faces and their body, and give them some really press hard with my chalk. So the front of their face and the front of their body kind of lit up a little bit. Okay. Put a little lighter. There we go. So just want to press hard on the front part of the boat. And then on the front side of their face and the front side of their body, press hard with your chalk. And we're going to come back in and we're going to do the same thing under the sun. See how my reflection here is brighter white right down the middle of it? So we're going to do the same thing here. Right in the middle, I'm going to press harder with my chalk. I'm going to make these lines a little closer together. Still going to let a little black of my paper show. See how my, I'm not coloring it in solid? See how I see little hints of black paper showing through? But I'm going to come in and press harder and kind of light up my center section of that reflection. Looks pretty cool, I think. How's yours looking? I'm going to come soften out these edges out here just right out here on this outside part from those first reflection lines you also take my finger and it kind of kind of pulls them very lightly out a little bit now don't get your finger don't let your finger run into your boat or your people you don't want to smudge them I'm gonna smudge out my reflection got a little piece of chalk that fell off there there we go 
Okay, I might smudge in here just a little bit, very lightly. I'm hardly pressing with my finger. But out at the edges, I might smudge it just a little bit. Okay, I think that's looking pretty good. I want to make sure my sun is really bright right in here. So if you needed to come back in and add any more white right in there on that bottom part of your sun. And this is where I want my mountains to look the whitest. So I could go back and add just a little bright white right in this one little spot. Come right up and just leave a little edge of the mountain there. Okay. And I'm just going to blend out at the edges with my little finger. What do you think? Tap it off. And we have a sunrise theme lighten up the water with the people out boating here. Are you a morning person? Does this look like something you'd like to do? I'm not much of a morning person, so I don't think you'd find me out in a boat at sunrise. But we got some friends of ours that are definite morning people, and they would be somebody that would be out on this boat in this wonderful state water having a good time as the sun comes up so use your chalk tap it off lightly and take some pictures so I can see how your boat and your people turned out so I can see how your sunrise turned out we'll sit it up here so you can see will it stay it won't stay will it mr. doughy whoops I'm gonna see if I can make it sit up here so you can see it but I can't so we'll just hold it here. So take the pictures, tag us at Idea Studio so I can see how your sunrise has turned out, or our sunrise is up here. Tag us and let us see. I'd love to see how your chalk pictures turned out. Chalk is kind of fun because you can get some really subtle shadows really easily with just blending your finger. So take some pictures, post them on Facebook, but don't forget to tag us at Idea Studio and go on and order bags. Lydia, I saw your mom order yours and Patrick's. I think that I just saw that this morning. We'll have bag pick up this Saturday. And next week we have this cool project. We did ink wash a couple times in here. I think we've done a pelican and we did a dolphin way back in the very beginning in March. We are going to do an ink wash, but it's going to be red. We're going to use red ink wash and do this very cool picture next week of a flamingo so be sure and go on and order your bags because we'll have special pens in the bags next week to do our ink wash so go on and order your bag pickup will be this saturday it's grab and go at the curbside from 11 a.m to 3 p.m you can just drive by grab your bags don't forget to take a picture of your sunrises here so i can see how they turned out and then tag us at idea studio and we'll see you tomorrow bye Okay.